What's up, y'all? Welcome back to Fish the Moment. Today, I'm out here on Beaver Lake, and we're gonna be doing a three-hour challenge in some pretty severe conditions. So let's get into it. So for those of you who haven't seen one of my three-hour challenge videos before, I always spend an hour before every challenge driving around the lake and trying to find fish with my electronics. And I always split up my graphing sessions between both the shallow water and the offshore deep areas. And in this one hour graphing session, I was able to find some fish offshore in 20 to 40 feet of water. The one thing I found though is that there was a lot of bait fish offshore, but very few bass around those bait fish. And I have a video explaining how to identify active bass in a fish finder. And these images definitely are inactive bass. And so because I didn't see any active bass offshore in about 30 minutes of graphing, I decided to start graphing down some steeper rocky banks leading into the creeks and on the main lake. And on a couple of the banks I graphed, I saw bait fish everywhere, just five to 15 feet off the bank. And this really got me excited because the conditions were setting up for a shallow water bite and I actually could find a lot of banks with bait fish close by, which is always a good indicator that the bass are going to be nearby. And so I decided to start on a channel swing bank on the main lake with a bunch of bait fish and hoping to get some fish in the boat. Okay guys, so I just got done with my one hour graphing session and I didn't find anything great offshore. It didn't seem like the fish were grouped up in big schools like they normally are in the fall out here. And the fish I did find that were suspended around bait fish or on cover seemed really inactive. They weren't chasing the bait fish or anything like that. And if we look at the conditions today actually, it's pretty brutal. We have some high rising water because we had a bunch of rain the last two or three days and air temperatures were in the 30s all day those two days. And so the water is kind of cold, cooling off muddying up and rising but a lot of times in the fall and in the winter I find that I can actually catch some really good fish up shallow in these conditions because water temperatures are still in that like 58 59 degree range which is plenty warm enough for those fish to be aggressive plus they have a lot of flooded cover and the water's muddying up a little bit so if we can find a stretch that has some bait fish on it and maybe some active bass pulling up with the sun we might be able to catch some good fish and so I'm gonna focus my whole three-hour challenge today fishing up shallow seeing what I can do and that might be a mistake maybe I should be fishing offshore but I'm gonna walk you through how I at least approach these conditions and hopefully put some fish in the boat God oh no my, my line it's stuck in my reel get up here fish oh, there we go number one right there oh my gosh had a tiny backlash guys <laughs> the line got caught around my reel handle got that fish out of a little tree right here number one right there that is nice fish not a 15 inch keeper 15 inch size limit here on beaver lake but as tough as the conditions are today i'm just going to try to count my uh five fish period regardless of the size limit but got that fish here on a little uh, bitsy jig flipping against this tree in this bluff so i'm fishing for about 10 minutes and that's a great sign <sighs> number one in the boat so i'm talking about this guy get back down there awesome so again just taking this little bitsy jig and there's just all these trees down this super steep bluff bank and i flipped that jig up there got to the bottom about seven eight feet of water and that fish ate it and so wow pretty good right there Definitely something that I can kind of build off of and it's great to kind of get some momentum right away in the in the beginning of the day guys um, You know sometimes it can be a little bit of a struggle to actually start catching fish But because I saw the bait fish out in front of this bluff wall like I mentioned earlier and Just because I had a feeling that maybe some of these fish were pulling up into some of these flooded trees I had a pretty good feeling that I could catch some fish here but obviously you just never know for sure but now that i know that there's at least one fish on this wall i'm going to basically slowly pick it apart with this jig try to see if i can't get a few more bites and if i can put a pattern together just running banks like this could be game on so here's the bank where i just caught that fish and it's just a main lake bank with the main river channel swinging really tight to it which creates a really sharp drop from like two feet of water to 60 feet of water 
and out in front of this bank, there's a lot of standing timber, and there was a pile of bait fish. And I found this when I was graphing in front of this bank when I first was looking around during my one hour graphing session. And a lot of times you can actually graph in front of banks, especially on these deep clear lakes, and find bait fish as well as find fish. And you can actually use your electronics to clue you in to which banks you should be fishing and which banks you should be staying away from. Got him. <laughs> There we go, number two. Nice spotted bass right there. Nice. It's a keeper spot. That's a kid of you keeper if it was a large mouth too. That fish was shallow, like up in a foot of water on that rock wall. That's what I'm talking about. Nice keeper right there on a little finesse jig. That actually be a good fish in a tournament right now. Really winning weights in tournaments out here, guys, for a two-day event has been like 22 pounds, so 11 pounds a day. So if you can get a limit of those and then a couple two and a half to three pound kickers, you're doing really well in the tournament. So I'm pretty happy with that right there. Whew, take that back down there. That fish just came right here, guys, off this little rock wall. And I literally pitched that thing up there in a foot of water, and that fish ate it. And so Seems like these fish are definitely up a little bit shallower. Water temps are almost still in the 60s. And again, just throwing a little 7 16 sounds finesse jig with a little zoom. Uh, I think it's like a critter craw or something like that. It's like the cheapest trailer you can get for a jig from zoom. I think you can get like 12 of them for $2.99 or something ridiculous. And so I love kind of finding trailers and things that can save money. And I'll link that bait down in the description. But especially when these water temperatures dip into the 75 degree range, that trailer with a little bit less action always seems to do a lot better for me. And I can also skip this bait pretty well up around the trees and things like that. And so that is awesome. Two fish in the boat in quick succession here, guys. So definitely seems like fishing a jig down some of these steeper rocky walls is a pattern that I can run with. And it's something I'm definitely going to keep trying around the lake here. And I just need to find these bluffs looks like with some bait fish around them. And I actually have a couple more banks that I found that match this almost exactly. And so I should be able to hopefully run two or three of those banks, maybe look for a couple more and put some fish in the boat. That's what I'm talking about guys. Okay guys, so I've only been fishing for about 30 minutes here and I have two fish in the boat already, which is awesome given these conditions. And so what I want to do is now try to replicate the area where I just caught those fish, which means finding a steep rocky wall with some bait fish on it and hopefully some trees that are also flooded up into the water. And so if I can find all those things, hopefully I can put my jig down there and put some more fish in the boat. So let's go find another bank. go another fish right here another largemouth that's what i'm talking about getting another keeper largemouth but we're just going for five right now pull up on another bluffy wall through that jig down there another fish literally the next spot i pulled up on guys this is definitely a pattern right now and i'm just catching them pretty consistently on that finesse jig down these rocky banks that's what i'm talking about there we go really nice fish right there just got that guy Again, fishing down this bluff wall. He was about maybe four or five feet off the wall. He wasn't right up on the bank. He was kind of like on that first step off the bank. But it's awesome that I can just literally roll to another bank that looks identical to where I started. Just not that far up the lake, just really across the lake pretty much where the channel kind of swings in the next time close to the bank and that fish was there. And so I don't know if this is a way to catch really good ones, but it definitely is a way to put fish in the boat. And that's three fish so far. And I'm thinking if I can get five fish in the boat doing this pretty quick, then I can try to maybe adjust and maybe try offshore, maybe try to run the back of a creek, something to put some bigger fish in the boat. But for now, I am only 45 minutes in my day and have three keepers. And so if I can get two more here really quick, there's a bluff here and there's a bluff straight across the way. I should be able to get these five fish in the boat pretty quick here. That is awesome. 
So here's a look at the bank where I just caught that fish and it looks pretty much identical to the first spot where I caught my fish. Again, another main lake bank with a channel swing next to it. And you can also see that there is standing timber in front of this bank with a pile of bait fish. And so that's two banks that look identical on Navionics with the same type of rock that also have a lot of bait fish in front of them and they both had fish. And so that's a pretty solid pattern and one that I think I can replicate around the lake. So after catching my third keeper, I had caught three fish on two separate areas that looked almost identical. And so I wanted to replicate this area around the lake. And so I started looking for more areas where a main river channel swung up against a main lake bank. And I didn't really know if the presence of bait fish was that important. And so I just went and started fishing the first bank like this that I could find. And as I was fishing down it, I realized there was practically no bait fish there and I didn't get any bites. I spent about 30 minutes fishing down a pretty long stretch of bank. Then I ran up the lake a little bit and actually graphed a bank before fishing it and saw there was a lot more bait fish on this one and actually did get a bite, which I missed. And so I spent about an hour doing this and really didn't get any more bites. And so I decided to go back to the area where I started the day where I caught my two fish, hoping there was some more fish that pulled up. And when I got there, I got some quick results. There we go. Number four right there. Just came back to the bank where I started, guys, and immediately got another bite. Seems like these certain walls, maybe 30 yard stretches, have a bunch of fish on them, and there's a bunch of bait kicking around this spot. So, not a keeper again for Beaver Lake, but it's a keeper for my challenge, 12 incher. That's number four. Got about an hour and a half left to fish, guys. Gotta get one more in the boat, and we gotta go for, go for some kickers. So after catching my fourth keeper, I decided to run to a bank that I had graphed at the beginning of my one hour graphing session. Now this bank was not on the main lake, but it did have a lot of bait fish out in front of it and it had the same type of rock that was on the two banks where I actually caught my fish. And so even though it didn't perfectly match the pattern, I felt like I could still catch some fish there because it had two of the three key elements. Got it. Get over that fish. Oh no, there we go, I jumped right over. Eat the fish, that was bad. That's a good one too. There we go, Smallie right there, number five on the jig. There we go. Oh, that's what I'm talking about, guys. That fish was over top of the log. One more rocky bank with some shad. I graphed it earlier today, kind of saving it here towards the end, and I uh, got an hour left to fish, and so got number five. Let me get this guy on hook real quick. There we go, nice smallmouth bass. Just got him on that same exact finesse jig right there. Three eighths ounce, nice fish right there. Let's put him back in the lake. There we go. Rocky bank, rocks with a jig. Pretty straightforward. Seems like I kind of got it dialed in. You have to have kind of this, I don't know, 90 degree sloping bank like a very steep bank but it doesn't need to be super deep like it's not uh, a bluff where it goes from a foot down to 60 foot right now my boat's only in 15 feet of water and so they kind of want this really sharp steep rock like a stair step rock but they want it a little bit shallower than the straight bluffs and then there has to be some shad around so I'm graphing in front of all these areas before i fish them to see the shad once i see the shad i see the rock that looks like this i'm just fishing that jig and i'm working it up all the way up to the bank and then most of my bites have been coming when i work it probably four hops off the bank so they're kind of just probably five to ten feet off the bank they're not right up on the on the rocks and so all of my bites have been coming right there, all on this jig, and that is number five. Again, not big ones, but that is number five. And so, actually what I'm thinking about doing is just completely switching gears now since I have five fish and try to go for some bigger ones, show you what I would do if I wanted to get one big bite. And in the fall, for me, that means going after largemouth. And that means going in the back of a major creek, throwing something like a spinner bait or a crank bait, and try and just get one or two big bites. And so I'm gonna make a couple more casts on this bank just because I caught one. Maybe there's some bigger smallmouth pulled up on this bank. Kind of doubt it, but uh, let's just fish here for just a minute a little more. Then we're gonna actually run out of here and run into the back of a creek. I'm gonna pick up that spinner bait and see if we can't put one big largemouth in the boat before we end the day. 
So whenever I'm trying to catch bigger fish, I always try to rely on past experience and think about places where I caught three plus pound bass in similar conditions, similar time of year, and the same type of lake. And I also think back to past tournaments that I've watched where the pros catch fish that are bigger than average in similar fisheries. And I remembered that I had caught a lot of good fish on lakes similar to Beaver Lake in the very backs of the creeks this time of year. And I was throwing spinner baits and crank baits on isolated wood. And so I actually pulled up Google Earth and looked at some of the very backs of the creeks and tried to find a very flat creek that had some nice laydowns in the back. And I ran back there and I found some really good looking banks as well as some good laydowns and was pretty optimistic that I was going to be able to catch some bigger fish. Well, it's not the size I'm looking for, but I finally found the shad back in here. Got that guy in a little spinner bait. <laughs> Came back here trying to look for big ones, and I'm still catching dinks. That's Beaver Lake for you guys. There's just dinks all over this lake. But uh, let me get this guy in hook real quick. Oh, there we go, guys. Tiny little fish on a big spinner bait. So that goes figures for beaver. This lake is uh, definitely not the best lake in the country by any means but it's a fun lake to fish it's a challenge that's why i really like it and you can do a lot of different things you know we see i was fishing uh out in the main lake fishing those steep walls i catch some fish offshore here in 40 feet of water and then you can come back in the back of these kind of flooded pockets back of the creeks and fish a spinnerbait fishing some dirtier water and so it's a really diverse fishery and i mean there's times you can go and crush them out here but right now <laughs> definitely uh not happening as far as the big fish goes but i mean i'm catching a decent number of fish honestly i don't feel that bad about the numbers i'm catching today and so um one thing that i've realized though is that i spent my entire day fishing up shallow on beaver today and i talked about this in my last three hour challenge video but it seems like every time that i mix up fishing deep and shallow in the same three hour challenge i don't catch them very well and then every time i stick with one thing either fishing all day offshore or all day up shallow i seem to put my five fish in the boat and that's what happened today i stayed shallow all day got five in the boat and so the reason for that a lot of times is because i started to figure out the pattern i figured out which type of walls the fish were on uh, what uh, bait fish i needed to look for the actual lure i needed to fish all those different things and if i switched from fishing down those rock walls fishing offshore everything i learned in the first hour of the challenge is completely wiped out and so basically if i'm not catching any fish obviously i'm going to keep adjusting but once i start catching them i need to stick with what's working and just run it and run it and run it until i get five in the boat then i can come try some crazy stuff like fishing back in these shallow water areas trying to put big fish in the boat but for these three hour challenges the name of the game is putting five in the boat and that's what i'm trying to do oh and there we go guys that is the end of our three hour challenge. Let me stop this timer real quick. Oh, that's better guys. But anyways, I had a blast today on Beaver Lake. I did manage to catch five fish. Not all of them were Beaver Lake keepers, but they were keepers for my challenge. And I'm really happy with those five fish, given how tough the conditions were. And I only managed to get that one little fish in the back of this creek. But you know, a lot of times when you pull back in these creeks, it's kind of hit or miss. And a lot of times when you have only three hours to fish, it can be tough to guarantee you're gonna catch a big fish and so one thing that i want to try in an upcoming three hour challenge is instead of having my goal be to catch five fish in three hours i want to try let's say to catch one three pounder in three hours because obviously i've been showing you guys how to catch the little keeper bass but once you get five keepers how do you go catch a bigger one? And if you catch your you know, five keepers in three or four hours, and then you have three or four hours in your tournament day left, put a couple kickers in the boat, how would I go about doing that? And so I wanna show you guys what I would do in those situations, the type of techniques and areas I would try for that. And I'm gonna run to the stump, I'm gonna close it out here, but thanks again for checking out this video and I'll see y'all in the next one.